there and welcome. Am I on? All right, excellent. Hello there and welcome to the world of Pokemon. Me? I am a queer, trans, polyamorous programmer and occasional pony at the Recurse Center. Um, and here, I'm here today to talk about Pokemon Red. If you don't know Pokemon, uh, it was released in 1996. It's fully grayscale. It fits into one megabyte. And if you don't know about Pokemon, you're already looking at your phone. So you can just tune this out for a little bit. This is the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. It was released in 1989. It has a modified Z80 at less than 5 megahertz. It has 8 kibibytes of internal SRAM and runs at a glorious 160 times 144 pixels. So shout out to the person who thought 640 by 480 was the smallest we were going to go today. <laughs> now, here we are. Uh, just a side note, I can't make the, um, the Pokemon wing window any bigger, because if I do, the uh, emulator psych faults. And <laughs> my solution to this, quite, quite uh, cleverly, I think, was just to resize my desktop to 720p instead of 1080p, so everything gets bigger. Um, I want the plant Pokemon Bulbasaur. Um, they're really energetic, and they're also really cute. Um, this is, I'm going to call this uh, Bang Bang Games Done Quick, so I'm not going to give it a nickname, because that's, that's much faster. And now, uh, let's see what I got. Two parties. Let's make this a little wider. Yeah, there we go. So we have a nice uh, Pokemon right here. Uh, those stats are pretty good, but in a couple seconds, uh, my rival, Bang Bang East, is going to <laughs> is going to uh, get another Pokemon, and they're going to challenge me to a fight, and it's going to take forever. So instead. We're just going to say attack equals 150. I don't really want them to damage me, so defense equals 200. Uh, where uh, position equals 0. So now let's see how this fight goes for them. <laughs> let's check out our Pokemon. Let's do it. Bring it on. Now, I didn't change my speed attribute, so this Pokemon is going to get to go first, but uh, that's just going to show you how long this fight would usually take. Charmander. I, I don't know. This is going to be tricky. Go, Bulbasaur. Fight. Uh, tackle. Charmander, use Growl. Oh, my attack fell. <laughs> All right, how does this all work? So step one, we use something called the missing no glitch, and that allows us to get code execution. Then we live patch assembly code so that we <laughs> modify everything. Then we listen on the link port for inputs that are sent by my Rust program. And then we modify memory, and then we don't do any of that, because it's really, really hard, and I have an emulator, so I just modify the memory directly instead. <laughs> So this is the, this is the basic architecture. Uh, this is very shoulders of giants. So uh, these are the only parts that I actually wrote myself. Um, let's start with uh, this unlabeled rectangle in the corner. Uh, we're running inside an emulator called PyBoy, which was written by a couple of master's students at the University of Copenhagen who have been very nice about merging my pull requests. So shout out to them. Um, PyBoy. If you think back to the Game Boy stats, compare them to this. Runs Python 2.7. It makes me very sad that it doesn't run in Python 3. I have a PyPy bug if you want to solve that. Um, it uses 180 megabytes of memory. Uh, it uses SDL, which is where those seg faults come from. And it is so resource intensive that I basically had to buy this new computer to run it because my Chromebook wasn't fast enough. <laughs> Um, so this is the service. Obviously, this is enterprise grade, so I'm using gRPC for the interconnection between these two components. So let's take a look at the get Pokemon request. Um, why Pokemon? Why red? Pokemon, because Bang Bang Con loves Pokemon. And red, because, well, we have a map for it. Uh, there is a complete map of all of the memory values 
of where data is stored inside Pokemon Red. This 44-byte struct represents an individual Pokemon in memory. Uh, these are the couple of attributes that I decided to pull out. Um, and this is how they're represented as protobufs, because obviously. <laughs> um, so I pull these out of memory. And you can see here that all of these, these arrays are one indexed conceptually and zero indexed uh, in program, which is great. Um, so we have all of these addresses. And the thing about uh, the Game Boy is that there's no address randomization. There's no memory mapping. Every time I boot up this emulator, uh, D164 is going to be where the first Pokemon is, which makes this much easier to do. So when I get a Pokemon, I just uh, get the start of the memory. In this case, it's uh, D164. Multiply that by the 44 bytes times the index, and I get the Pokemon. And the only thing left to do is pick out those individual things that I chose. You can see the offsets over here. Um, the values are big Endian, so you have to do some bit bashing to it to make it work properly. Uh, I don't know what the difference is between big Endian and little Endian. I just reversed these statements until the values looked about right. <laughs> now, what about Postgres? That's the like. That's the kind of weird part here. So. Let's look at this, uh, this Telltale Rust logo inside of this C programming language. Postgres extensions are usually written in C. Um, this is a thing that I don't remember what it does. It's from the example code. Something about uh, not overpaying your employees because capitalism is bad. Um, <laughs> this is how you would add it to uh, Postgres itself. You can see that there is a directory and C, and this is the important part, language C strict. They're really strict. I don't know. C is really more of a suggestion, I would say. Um, I found somebody online who made a Postgres extension framework written in Rust. Um, they have also been very good about merging my pull requests. And I sent them so many that I got commit access last night. <laughs> so this is a very simple Rust function that just uh, adds two numbers together which is not particularly interesting. But you can see that this function that takes in a value and returns a value has a lot of, a lot of potential. Um, but we're working with foreign data wrappers because we don't want to work on values. We want to work on entire tables. Um, these begin foreign scan and iterate tuple scan are the callbacks we're going to get from the Postgres database. Um, and if you notice, they look an awful lot like an iterator in Rust or any other language that you might use. So that is exactly how I implemented them. I wrote a lot of really ugly looking Rust so that I could write a lot of really clean looking Rust on this, on this part of it. Um, and now let's go back to Pallet Town because I've got a couple more tricks up my sleeve. Um, I want to go see, I want to go get some Pokeballs, but I'm not going to be able to do that right away. Uh, I Bang Bang West defeated Bang Bang East, but. <laughs> We're not. It was a. It was a. It was a fair fight. <laughs> um, all right, and he's gonna go do some uh, do some Pokemon fighting as you do. Um, now, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. Uh, and normally, when you go, I want to go to Viridian City. Uh, there's a really great song about going to Viridian City. You should look it up. But I don't really want to have to deal with a whole bunch of other Pokemon. So uh, let's take a look at, yeah, Max Repel. Um, I don't have any items right now. Uh, my inventory is empty. But uh, if I just do insert into inventory ID uh, quantity values. Uh, 57, let's give myself 10. Uh, now, it's just, and now I can continue completely unencumbered. And while we're at it, I'm in a hurry, so. Let's just give myself a, a bicycle while we're at it. <laughs> Uh, there's some assembly involved. Uh, I ran out of time, but uh, special thanks to the people who wrote uh, PG Extend RS, the people who wrote Pie Boy, and my glorious fiance for knowing everything about Pokemon. 
Um, thank you very much.